Um, Wish You Were Here was a work that I made in 2010. Um, and at that time, I was looking at um, women in my family who were all domestic workers. Um, and I made a series of works, and, um, and all these domestic workers were wearing blue uh, dresses that have uh, a Victorian um, influence to them, but at the same time looking at control and also looking at uh, fashion. In 2009, I had a, 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 a solo show at Gallery Momo titled Lonely the Dead Queen. So Lonely the Dead Queen was, I was looking at my personal history um, as a black uh, young South African woman. And in a way, I was investigating, wanted to see, I wanted to find out how things became to be. And of course, while I was investigating, um, you, I, I couldn't uh, ignore um, all these um, monument uh, chapters, monumental chapters, i.e. Uh, colonialism, apartheid. And, um, and I wanted to find out why were black women, and still are, were, or why were black women um, domestic workers? And, and of course, for me to um, ask a question like that, it's, it's broad. So I wanted to bring it closer and narrow it down and look at my personal history and look at my women in my family who were all domestic workers. So when I created the, 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 the character, um, so from, from my great-grandmother up to my mother, all these women, all these women were domestic workers. And um, I wanted to create another persona, another an outer ego in a way. And um, then there was the birth of Sophie. So Sophie closes her eyes and she, whatever she wishes for, whatever she can see in her head becomes a reality. I created this character, an alter ego. I named her Sophie. And the reason for that is it was compulsory for a black child to have two names. One African name and one Christian name. And um, so, in a way, Sophie, the, the, the name Sophie is a bookmark in, in this journey that I'm, or in this, um, in this history that I'm rewriting using, um, using sculptures or, vi or using visual, a visual language. Um, so, my great-grandmother, she had two African names, but I think when she died, she had a Christian name and an African name. And um, um, when she tells the story, she's actually not even sure how she came about to have a, a, a Christian name and an African name. Um, so her name was Elsie. And Elsie, um, she was named by her masters when she, when she worked for, 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 for this family um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the 1930s. And I think in a way they couldn't be bothered to remember her name or to know her African name, so they showed, so they gave her um, the, the the name Elsie. So for me to name this alter ego or this character Sophie was um, a reminder of, of names or, or name um, giving in South Africa as a black child. I chose blue in that. Um, Blue for me had this spiritual connection to it. Um, we have these churches in South Africa called the Zionist churches, and they wear the same blue. So I buy my fabrics where they buy their fabrics to make their uh, uh, church um, um, outfits. Uh, so for me, there is that connection of African and Christianity, and what is that? Where do I see myself in that? What am I saying about it? Um, so it's just this back and forth, like finding out in history, asking history, and also it, at the same time changing it. Because um, I also realize that some histories are actually distorted. Um, and, and for us as, um, as uh, black people in South Africa, we have to be in a position where we actually write our own history. So when I was looking at the blue, um, I at some point I decided to let go of that narrative, the domestic worker narrative, because um, for me um, it's a it's a story that is dear to me. The the people that I'm talking about or that I was talking about um, in the work are, are are close to me. They are my family members, but at the same time, this the story that I'm talking about is it 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 um, 
It connects with a, a, with a broader South Africa. It's not uniquely Mary Sibandi's story. A lot of people can relate to it. <laughs>